So glad you could join the class today. This is all about focusing on twists to free up the upper back, getting into the hips, the hamstrings, a little bit of everything really. Flow and let go means that for the first part of the practice, like a good 30 minutes, we're gonna be moving pretty quickly, starting to build heat in the body so that for the last part of the practice, the last 10, 15 minutes, we can really settle into longer holds, about five breaths in each pose, so that we have that time to clear our minds and build the warmth in the body to let ourselves drop into stillness. I'm so excited for you to take the class today, grab any props you need, and when you're ready, let's get started. All right, guys, we'll start today lying down on our backs, taking the feet as wide as the edges of the mat with the knees bent and knocking inwards. So we've got a bit of internal rotation to help support the low back. Arms can be either out by the sides or hands to belly. More to the frontal hip point region, bringing a little bit of weight there, a little bit of comfort there. Once you're settled in, closing the eyes, Noticing the natural quality and pace of your breath. Without trying to change anything at all, just tuning in. See if you can relax the face a little bit more, the forehead, your cheeks and your jaw. And imagine there's a balloon at the center of your body so that every inhale has this naturally kind of buoyant and expansive quality all the way around your center, not just the front, but the back ribs as well. And the exhales deflate you a little and shrink you a little. Taking this time to shift our minds away from whatever was happening before we came to our mats. And bringing more attention to our bodies, our breath. The next few breath cycles here, let's intentionally inflate our balloons a little bit more. So deeper longer, more filling inhales, and equally slow exhales, moving everything in reverse. A couple more like that. Good, next one. Inflate all the way to the very top of the breath and pause there. Feeling how buoyant the belly is underneath your hands, how kind of flared out the ribs are, how lifted the chest is. And open your mouth and let out the breath <sighs> with a big sigh. Good, coming back to breathing exclusively in and out your nose. and setting the intention just to stay connected to your breath and the sensations in your body and to move in harmony with the two. Take the arms overhead. You can still have the eyes closed and reach for opposite elbows above your head, completely relaxing the shoulders, keeping the feet this wide. Take big windshield wipers of the knees from side to side. We're starting to get into the hips, moving through internal and external rotation. And getting a nice massage for the low back and a very gentle twist in the belly. And stretch the legs long one at a time. If you've got the room, reach the arms long as well. Pointing your toes, spreading the fingertips, breathe in. And soften everything, exhale. And draw just the right knee into your chest, interlacing your fingers over the shin or the knee. And see if you can just hold here, pressing through the left heel, bringing that right knee in really tight, depending on how open the hip flexor is. 
almost like you want the thigh to touch your belly. Plug the shoulder blades down. And bring the right knee across your body for a twist. You might need to move the left hip to the right a little bit. Taking it across, stretch the right arm away from you. The arm could be straight or the elbow could be bent slightly. Ah, maybe you got a little bit of a crack out of the spine here. Take two deep breaths. And come back through center at the bottom of that exhale and switch right leg long. Set the heel down, left knee into your chest, relaxing the head and shoulders. Take a moment pressing through your right heel. I'm trying to draw that left leg in really close. And tucking the right hip under a bit, take the left knee across your body for your twist. Stretch the left arm away from you. I'm trying to stack the hips. And you might have a bend to the elbow so you can really anchor the back of the shoulder. So good here to release into the spine, the low back. Take one more breath. And come back through center. Both knees to the chest. Make sure the low back is even on the mat. Rock a little from side to side, holding your knees. And it might feel good to draw individual circles with the knees, so let the knees come apart to either some side of your chest. Take them forward, together, and back in. And apart, away, smooth out the circles. Again, getting some mobility into the hips, lubricating the hip joint, and the low back can really benefit from this movement. Change the direction of your circles a couple times. Ah, knees coming tight to the chest. Reach the hands behind your legs and start to rock up and down the length of your spine by swinging the legs. Make sure you round the back when you roll back. And see if you can just catch a moment of kind of float time at the top where the feet are hovering above the mat. Do this a couple more times. Rock up. Hang for a second. Roll back. Rock up. Roll back. Next time you rock up, cross-legged seat. Ah, facing the top of the mat, I'll turn to face you. And grounding through the hips, find a sense of stacking of the head over the shoulders over the hips and take the arms up, palms facing forward. Plug the shoulder blades down the back, one of my all-time favorite uh, wrist warm-ups. Spread the fingers wide, then make tight fists with your hands. And again, spread your fingers and make tight fists and do that a little bit faster. <laughs> So you might have done this before, and you know that this is uh, kind of a mind over matter situation. In about 10 seconds, we'll start to feel some intensity in the forearms. Keep going. Good, keep the shoulders down from the ears. Woo. Try to relax the face, even though when things get intense, it does want to start to kind of scrunch up. Just relax the face like this is no big deal so that we're building heat and strength in the forearms. We're awakening the muscles that will help support our wrists when we eventually come into our hands. Ooh, can we go for another three? Breathe, two. Hold at the top, fingers spreading on one, maybe a little bit of a tingling sensation in the fingers. Bend the elbows down in line with your shoulders, roll the shoulders back, squeeze the elbows back, inhale. Exhale, close the hands, interlace your fingers, and roll out figure eights with your wrists. Ah. <laughs> I'm kind of doing like a full body figure eight. <laughs> and go opposite direction. Hmm, that's weird to think about. And make your way into hands and knees tabletop. However you'd like to get there, walking the knees back to hips distance apart. Spread the fingers. Toes can be tucked or untucked. Totally up to you. Shoulders over wrists. And claw the mat with your fingertips like you're holding a rounded surface, almost like you're turning a doorknob, so how you would hold something round. On your next exhale, straighten the arms. Cat pose. Spread the shoulder blades. Tuck the tailbone. Tuck the chin to your chest. On your inhale, cow. Lift the tailbone. Lift the chest through your arms, and the head will lift less. Exhale, draw the belly in, chin to chest, press the mat away, cat. Inhale, cow, let the belly drop, the heart and the tailbone lift, and then the head. Good, and keep cycling through cats and cows with your breath. And anything in between that feels good. It doesn't have to be a particular pose. It can just be a movement, a shape, 
You can get the ribs involved. You can get the head moving, the hips moving. Good. Really anything that helps you to get more into your body, get more into areas that might feel a little bit stuck. Keeping the breath flow smooth. Good. And finishing up whatever movement you're working on. Come back to tabletop, but take the hands slightly forward of the shoulders now. Claw them out with fingertips, forearms lift. Tuck your toes. Send the hips back towards your heels like you're going to a child's pose. Drop the head. Lift your knees off the mat, downward facing dog. The tailbone lifts high. And do whatever you need to do here in your down dog, just like cat cow. Any movement that feels good. Swaying hips side to side or front to back. Slowly walking up the legs, even shaking out the head. Feeling a sense of lifting from the forearms and anchoring down through the index knuckle and the thumb pad so that we're spreading the weight evenly across the palm, not just the pinky edges of the hands. Good. Let's take her down dog wider now. Step the feet right to the edges of the mat. It might just be that your big toes are on the mat. And walk your hands back only half of the way. So it's a shorter, wider down dog. Bend the knees as much as you need to. Maybe the heels are touching down. Maybe they're not. It's all good either way. Reach the right arm underneath the left arm to that outer left leg. Going for the calf or if you can, thigh or ankle. And turn your gaze underneath the left arm, maybe even up. Bending your right elbow as much as feels good and breathe, looking underneath the window of your arm. One more. Good, release right hand back to the mat and switch. Left arm reaches underneath to the outer right leg, ankle or calf, and turn your gaze underneath the right arm, even up if that's okay with the neck, bending your left elbow as much as you're comfortable. Remember, knees can bend here. One more breath. Good. Left hand back to the mat. Walk yourself back the rest of the way towards your feet. Again, you can bend the knees as much as needed. Grab a hold of opposite elbows here. Drop your head and sway your body side to side and front to back. Uh, really try to let go of holding up the head so that there's absolutely no tension in the neck. Your head gets heavy and you're allowing gravity to pull you deeper into the fold. Not looking for the hamstring stretch, looking for the low back stretch. So again, go ahead and bend the knees as much as needed. Release the fingertips down to the mat. Turn your heels in and your toes to face out. Sink your hips as low as you can, tracking the knees outward. Lift the hands to heart center, Malasana, yogi squat, inhale. Fingertips down, fold again, exhale, drop your head, lift your hips, a couple more like that. With the breath, bend your knees, inhale, hands to heart, lift the chest. Exhale, drop the hands, lift your butt. Inhale, sit low. Exhale, fold. Last one, inhale, squatting low. Exhale, fold. Toe heel the feet to hips distance apart now. Soft bend in the knees. Take a slow roll up the spine. So first drawing energy up the legs, straightening your legs. Then energy up the spine. Head lifts last. Roll the shoulders back. Ah, Standing tall. Anchoring through the feet. Reach the arms up on your inhale. Take the left hand down the left side. Reach the right arm up and over as you exhale. Side bending. Come back through center. Inhale. Right hand down, left arm up and over. Exhale, keep the feet grounded. One more each side. Inhale, center. Exhale, side bend. Inhale, center. Exhale, side bend. Inhale, back through center, both arms up. Exhale, hands by your side, slow roll back down the spine. So keep the knees soft as you let the head and arms drop. And when the fingertips touch down, halfway lift, lengthen hands to shins, chest forward, inhale. Fold down again, exhale. Walk your palms forward, high plank. So crawl the palms forward into the shoulders over the wrists. You might need to step the feet back. Clawing them out with your fingertips, strong through the legs, lifted through the belly, inhale. Soften the knees, downward facing dog, exhale. Lift your tailbone high. Tuck your tailbone to initiate this roll forward again to high plank, like a wave through the spine, inhale. 
lift the tailbone downward facing dog exhale two more inhale roll it forward high plank stopping with shoulders over wrists exhale down dog driving through the feet one more time inhale high plank breaking with your fingertips exhale down dog this time inhale come forward to your high plank or modified plank with the knees down send your chest forward so you come right to tippy toes or with the knees down so that the shoulders are further than the fingertips bend your elbows lower all the way to your bellies and release stretch the toes back take the elbows forward and lift your chest away from the mat and you might need to wiggle yourself back a little bit here so that you're lifting the chest and the shoulders are right over the elbow sphinx pose actively press through the tops of the feet so much that the kneecaps are lifting shoulders back lift your chest sphinx pose inhale exhale chin to chest press into your knees and your elbows can you lift your belly and your thighs off the mat so modified forearm plank and again pelvis down lift the chest shoulders back inhale think cat here exhale round through the upper back tuck the tailbone lift your belly last one inhale looking forward upper back bend exhale holding with the belly off the mat maybe without tucking your toes you see if you can lift your knees off the mat from the tops of your feet of course if you have any ankle injuries you won't want to do this you'll want to tuck the toes see if we can hold steady looking just between the thumbs three two and one pelvis back to the mat sphinx pose inhale let the chest come down to the mat sweep the fingertips out by the sides as you exhale so in line with your chest tenting your fingertips shoulders back come up little cobra inhale not very high yet exhale chest down and forward a little higher this time inhale squeeze the upper back cobra on fingertips exhale release adding a twist inhale coming up turn the right shoulder down look over your left shoulder as you exhale good back through center inhale on fingertips other way left shoulder down look over your right exhale and back through center inhale release the chest back to the mat exhale bring the hands next to your sides elbows squeeze back shoulders lift more traditional cobra inhale lift the chest pressing into your hands right into cat pose exhale hands and knees it's okay if you're a bit wider just spread the shoulder blades tuck the tailbone tuck your toes under inhale hips back towards your heels our floating child's pose downward facing dog exhale go ahead and lift the tailbone high take a deep breath <sighs> could bend the knees lift your heels step up one foot at a time behind your wrist towards the top of the mat feet hips distance half lift lengthen through the spine inhale hands to shins exhale fold all the way up to standing inhale extend the arms above you hands through heart center exhale release the arms by your sides good let's keep it moving feet hips distance near the top of the mat inhale take the arms up bend your knees exhale left arm back right arm forward like a backstroke inhale straighten out look forward exhale bend the knees right arm back left arm forward inhale reaching both arms up forward fold exhale you can flap back your way down or you can roll your way down whatever feels good to you lift and lengthen inhale hands to shins exhale fold bend the knees a lot hands come down first one will step back to our plank pose hold for the inhale remember you can bring your knees down to the mat exhale shift forward bend your elbows lower chaturanga come to the tops of the feet cobra or if you're ready for an upward facing dog inhale downward facing dog on your exhale lift the tailbone high take a deep breath bend the knees lift your heels look slightly forward this time step or hop your toes up behind your wrists at the top of the mat feet hips distance inhale lift and lengthen exhale fold down rise to standing inhale arms up exhale hands through heart center and down by your sides and we'll do one more inhale take the arms up exhale bend the knees right arm back left arm forward up to standing inhale exhale left arm back right arm forward inhale rise up forward fold exhale any way you'd like to fold any arm variation lift and lengthen inhale exhale fold down plant the palms step back or maybe this time you're hopping back to chaturanga so make sure when you're hopping the feet back you're not landing in a plank you're bending the elbows so you're taking that impact into the muscles rather than the joints inhale cobra or up dog exhale downward facing dog deep breath in 
Stick out your tongue as you exhale. <laughs> Bend your knees. Lift your heels. Look slightly forward. Walk step or hop your feet up. Hips distance. Inhale. And exhale, fold. Starting a new flow. Inhale, take the arms all the way up. Fold right back down as you exhale. Lift and lengthen. Inhale. Exhale, folding down. Fingertips touch down. Step your left foot to the back of the mat so the right foot is forward. Drop the left hip low. Pull your chest forward. Inhale, runner's lunge. Exhale, pushing your hips back. Straighten the front leg any amount. Drop your head. Maybe even lifting the front toes. Hold for the inhale. Rebend the front knee, plant the left palm flat as you exhale. Inhale the right arm up, open, twist, and hold. Now firm up the inner thighs, really firm up that back leg, and see if you can get lighter and lighter on the left hand, maybe even coming up to left fingertips. Put a little bend in the back knee. And when you feel like most of the weight is in the legs, come on up, revolved lunge. Right hand back, left hand forward. Find a sense of stacking here, head, shoulders, hips, and twisting from the upper back. Good. See if you can look towards the back hand even. Breathe. Begin to lean back a little bit more. Right hand drops down. Left arm lifts up. Maybe even touch the back leg. Inhale. Unwind to warrior two as you exhale. Back heel flat. Left arm back. Right arm forward. Ha. Squeeze the shoulder blades. Bending deep into the front knee. But you can still see the front foot and the toes. You're not bending beyond. Flip the front palm to face up. Lean back, reverse your warrior. Inhale, right arm lifts. Exhale, cartwheel hands to either side of the front foot. Come to the ball of the back foot. Pick up the front foot, pressing through strong straight arms. Three-legged down dog, right leg lifts. Inhale. Exhale, bend the right knee, open up the hip so you're dropping the foot behind you. Just let it linger. Lift the right knee high for the inhale. Exhale, right knee across to left arm, twist. Come to the ball of the left foot. Really see if you can get that right knee up towards left armpit for three. Nice. Two. And one right leg up one more time. Inhale, three-legged down dog. Exhale, right foot steps behind right wrist, left foot behind left wrist, coming to the top of the mat. Lift and lengthen. Inhale. Exhale, fold. Coming up to standing, flat back or roll up. Inhale. Right back into your forward fold. Exhale, flat back or roll down. Lift and lengthen. Inhale, hands to shins. Exhale, folding down, fingertips down, right foot steps back this time. Lunge low. Inhale, pull your heart forward. Ah. Exhale, push your hips back to straighten the front leg. Any amount. Maybe lifting the front toes on your inhale. Rebend the front knee. Exhale, foot flat, right hand flat. Inhale, the left arm up and hold. So our open twist. Feeling a squeezing of the inner thighs, even though our legs are apart. Little bend in the back knee. Can you get lighter on the right hand? Coming up to right fingertips. Good. You might look down for the transition. Like something is pulling on your left hand. It brings you up. Slowly, slowly twisted lunge. Left hand back, right hand forward. Little bend in the back knee again. So notice what might happen if you straighten the back leg. You start to compress into the low back. So we bend the back knee and keep this to an upper body twist. Hmm. And breathe. And smile if it's challenging. Leaning back. Right arm lifts. Left hand drops. Inhale. Open up warrior two as you exhale. Right arm takes you up and over, left arm forward. Bend deep into the front knee. Extend in all directions, both arms, both legs active. Flip the front palm to face up, reverse warrior. Inhale, tipping back. Exhale, cartwheel hands to either side of the front foot. Come to the ball of the back foot. Press into your hands, left leg up and back. Three-legged down dog, inhale. Exhale, bend the knee, open up the hip. Hold for the inhale. Exhale, left knee across to right arm, twist and hold. See if you can get that left knee up high for three, two. Claw them out with fingertips. One, three-legged down dog, inhale. Exhale, left foot steps behind left wrist, right foot behind right wrist, top of the mat. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, fold. Up to standing, inhale. Roll up or flat back up. Exhale, release the hands to heart center and down by your sides. All right, so we're really building that heat. We're going to add on just a little bit more to that flow. Take the arms up as you're ready. You might pause and then come back to it. Inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Feel the strength in the back. 
Exhale, fold fingertips down, left foot steps back. Again, runner's lunge on your inhale, reaching the chest forward. Exhale, modified pyramid, push the hips back to straighten the front leg, maybe lifting the front toes. Hold for the inhale. Exhale, bend the front knee, stay on left fingertips. Inhale the right arm up, right away. Exhale, lifting up to our twisted lunge. When you arrive, tip your body back. Inhale, left arm higher. Exhale, warrior two, Whew, coming out of it. Reverse warrior, flip the front palm, lean back. Inhale, hold, exhale, straighten the front leg. Inhale, get longer on your left side. Exhale, triangle pose. Push your hips back. Keep all this length in both sides as you reach the right arm forward, then down and the left arm up. Good. Take your gaze down, focusing just beyond the front foot. Keep the belly contained so we're not just kind of hanging out here. We're drawing the core in. Begin to bend into the front knee, shifting your weight forward, Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon. Right fingertips land and the back foot lifts, stacking across the shoulders and across the hips. Really active lifted leg. Good. And again, smile here if you're kind of hopping around in one foot. Maybe some of you feeling really, really balanced, consider floating the right hand away from the mat. For three, keep looking down, two, Keep breathing deeply. On one, bend your right knee. How softly can you step back, warrior two? Right into reverse warrior. Inhale, right arm back. Exhale, cartwheel hands to either side of the front foot. Come to the ball of the back foot. Three-legged down dog. As you're ready, right leg lifts. Inhale. Exhale, bend the knee, open the hip. Push that right knee up high for the inhale. Exhale, right knee across to the left arm, twist. This time, send that right leg all the way through so you're on the pinky toe of the foot. Spinning the back heel flat, stay holding the stretch or reaching the left arm overhead. Lift your heart up, fall in triangle for three. Two, press into the right hand. And one left hand to the mat, right leg up and back one more time. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, step the right foot between your hands and the left foot right beside the right foot. So feet together, knees together. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, fold, adding a chair pose, bend the knees, inhale, Ukatasana. Sit low as you reach the arms up. Exhale, hands to heart center and twist to your left so you're bringing the right elbow outside the left knee. Good, press the palms, reach the head forward and sit the hips low. Now, a couple options, yogis. If you're working on leg strength, you can stay here. If you want to find balance on your toes, strengthening the ankles, you might come down right towards your heels, lifting the heels away from the mat. Hold your twist. Or finding balance on your hands. If you have a side crow available, you'll take it off towards the left side of the mat. I'm going to do this facing the back of the mat so that you can see the shape a bit better. Hands are shoulder distance apart. Fingers facing forward, bend the elbows like chaturanga. Lean your chest forward, squeeze elbows towards one another. Maybe squeeze heels up towards your butt. So stacking feet, stacking knees, heels to butt. Whatever kind of twist you're working on. See if you can hold for three, two, and forward fold on one. Release, uh, lift your hips. And toe heel the feet back to hips distance apart. Drop your head low. Reach hands behind your back, interlacing the fingers, pressing the palms. If your shoulders aren't happy with this, maybe grabbing opposite elbows instead behind your back. If you're interlacing, really squeeze the shoulder blades together. So instead of just straightening the arms, squeeze the upper back. Then you might float the pinky fingers overhead. And do a little shimmy from side to side with the chest. No tension in the back of the neck. Just let the head hang. Whew. And no slingshots, gently release the fingertips down to the mat. Lift and lengthen, inhale. Fold on down, exhale. Up to standing, inhale. Right back into your fold, exhale. Lift and lengthen, inhale. Second side, exhale, fingertips down, right foot steps back, left foot is forward. Inhale, runner's lunge, chest forward. Exhale, pyramid pose, press your hips back to straighten the front leg, maybe lifting the toes. Inhale. Exhale, re-bend the front knee, stay on right fingertips. Inhale, the left arm up, hold, bend the back knee a little. Exhale, carefully rise up into your twist. Lean back, inhale, exalt your twist. 
Warrior two, exhale, spin the back heel flat, open up. Left palm flips, reverse warrior, inhale, hold, exhale, straighten the front leg. Get more open on the right side, so inhale, lift, lift, lift. Exhale, hips back, reach the left arm forward, triangle pose, then drop the left hand down and the right arm up. Instantly putting a little bend in our left knee. Pressing through the pinky toe edge of the right foot. Shoulders are already stacking. And in a breath or two, we'll stack the hips in our half moon. Look in front of the left foot. Bend the front knee. Shift forward onto left fingertips. Right foot drags and <laughs> floats. Sometimes gracefully, sometimes not. <laughs> Keeping the gaze down for the balance here. The lifted leg is super active. The breath is strong and audible, maybe even thinking about floating the left hand away from the mat. <laughs> I have a bug on my mat. <laughs> For three, woo! <laughs> two, and one stepping back. Warrior two, as lightly as you can, right into reverse warrior. Inhale, exhale, hands down to the mat. Come to the ball of the back foot. Inhale, left leg up, three-legged down dog. Exhale, bend the knee, open the hip. Hold, let it linger, inhale. Exhale, left knee across to the right arm, twist and hold. Send that left leg all the way through to the pinky toe edge of the foot. Now option again to stay here in the stretch or spinning the back heel flat, right arm reaches over, fall in triangle in the strength pose. For three, lift the hips. Two, press into the left hand. And one, right hand down, come to the ball of the back foot, three-legged down dog, inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, step the left foot between your hands and the right foot next to the left foot, feet together. Lift and lengthen, inhale. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees, sit low, Utkatasana, chair pose, inhale. Exhale, hands to heart center, this time twisting towards our right. So left elbow to the outside of the right knee, roll the top shoulder back. Really reach out through the head. Good. And remember, options, staying and working your chair pose twist, driving through the heels, working your toe stand twist, driving through the balls of the feet, drop your hips towards your heels and lift your heels away from the mat. Or taking the hands over to the right side of the mat, side crow. Again, I'll show you facing you guys. Hands shoulder distance apart, elbow squeeze. We're laying the hip and the outer thigh on the arms as we lean forward, creating that shelf and squeezing the heels towards the butt. For three, keep working whatever twist you're picking. Two, and one, we'll release forward fold, facing the top of the mat. <sighs> Lift your hips, toe heel the feet back to hips distance apart. This time, really bend the knees. So let the hips sit low, almost like a kind of awkward squat so that the belly is right on top of your thighs. Relax the head, lift your toes and slide your palms beneath your feet. So we're standing on our palms and the fingertips are facing back towards the heels. And our toes are trying to come towards our wrist creases. Releasing the wrist by wiggling the toes. So if you're saying to yourself, oh my gosh, I can't stand on my hands. Bend your knees a lot. Sit low. Come more into like a chair pose shape. <sighs> Good. For those of you who can fold pretty deeply here, relaxing the head, looking back between your legs, you might pull the elbows wide and the shoulders out of the ears. Nice. Take another breath. Whew. Lift your toes, fingertips to shins. Inhale. Exhale, fold down. Up to standing. Inhale. Hands to heart center. Exhale. Arms by your sides. So we'll start to slow down now. Inhale, take the arms up. Forward fold. Exhale. Again, any arm variation. Lift and lengthen. Inhale. Exhale, fold, step your left foot towards the back of the mat. Lower the left knee down this time. Right knee over right ankle. Back toes can be tucked or untucked and you can cushion up that left knee as much as you need to. Bring the right hand on the right thigh and the left hand on the left thigh, rising up. So starting here, lifting our belly away from the right thigh. We'll take at least a couple breaths here and then I'll give you a few variations of a low lunge that you might like to work on. So just instead of doing them all, try to pick one and stay in it for about five breaths so you can get the most benefit, the most release out of the lunge that you choose. So 
Option one, stay right here. If you're feeling pretty good and open in the front of the left hip, you might drop a little lower and hold. Very supportive, hands to thigh. Option two, getting more into that kind of twisting theme. Left hand comes to the mat slightly further forward than the shoulder. Roll your right shoulder back. Still pressing the right hand into the right thigh or even bending the back knee to catch the pinky edge of the back foot. And that's if that feels okay for the back knee and the quad. Last option, lizard lunge. Both elbows will come down to the inside of the front foot and you can even wiggle the right foot more to the right side of the mat. So it's kind of a choose your own adventure at home lunge. Good lizard lungers, pull your chest forward. If you took the back foot grab variation, kick the pinky edge of the foot into the hand, almost like a Danyarasana, a bow pose. Good. And take about three more deep breaths, holding one. And when you do this class another time, you can always pick a different variation. Stay tapped into that breath. Good. Release hands to either side of the front foot. Make sure that front foot is centered. Push your hips back about half the way till the left hip is over the left knee and straighten out the right leg. Walk the fingertips back right underneath the shoulder. Right toes pull back. Ardha Hanumanasana, half splits. Breathe. So again, this is going to be kind of a choose your own adventure. You can hold as is. If you want to focus a little more on IT band, you can take the hands to the outside of the right leg. Let your chest turn to the right as the left foot and shin comes off the side of the mat. So we're fully twisting to the right. Ooh, if you got there and you're like, no, it's too intense, unwind and hold. Last option for you, if you're working strength, you can have back toes tucked or not. Maybe reach the arms back one at a time. Driving through the front heel, soft bend in that right knee. Whew. We got three more breaths. Hold whatever you choose. Two. One, re-bend the front knee. Plant your palms, make sure you unwind if you're twisting. Just for a moment, three-legged down dog. The right leg lifts, bend the knee, open the hip. Ah, feel that rush of release on the front of the hip. Take the right knee behind the right wrist. Pigeon prep, lower the knee down, lower the back knee down, but we'll let ourselves fall over to the right. We'll do a 90-90 pigeon. So bringing the right shin forward, we have a straight line from right hip to right knee. The right knee is close to the right side of the mat, toes flexing back. Bring the left knee in a bit. Back leg could be on a 90 degree angle. If you're cramping up a bit, a bit bring the left knee in. Now either looking forward to the top of the mat, or if it feels okay for your right knee and the hip, come forward onto elbows. Relaxing your head. If you've got a block at home, you can rest your head on a block. You can kind of build your own blocks by stacking the fists and bringing your forehead down. Take five breaths. We really can't rush the hips. They need time, they need patience to open up, to release tension. Let's try to relax. Try to keep your mind trained on the breath. And last two breath cycles. And slowly lift your head away from the mat. Coming back up. Stay leaning over to the right hip. Swing that left leg forward. Take the feet as wide as the edges of the mat. Hands just behind the back. And windshield wiper your legs from side to side. Ah, massage out the glutes. Good. Bring the feet all the way together. Knees together. Reach arms on either side of your legs. Leaning back. See if we can lift our feet. To boat pose. Inhale. Exhale, open up a little wider, half boat, so get low. Inhale, knees back to the chest. Exhale, low boat, hover the shoulders, hover the feet. Last time, inhale, boat pose. Exhale, low boat, hold, bring the knees into the chest and see if we can, without our hands this time, rock and roll up and down the length of the spine. Just a couple times. 
coming right up into chair. Plant the feet with or without the hands rise up. Woo! <laughs> Get in again. You might have used your hands. It's okay. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, fold, release. Hmm. Half lift, inhale. Folding down, exhale, fingertips down, right foot steps to the back of the mat. Lower the right knee all the way down, cushioning up the knee, tucking or untucking the back toes. Bring your hands up onto the left thigh. So left hand first, right hand second. Good, a very noble lunge. Like you're trying to get your front body away from that left thigh. Shoulders down the back. Ah, see how that right hip is feeling. And another breath or so, you might start to move into whatever lens you chose on the first side. We try to keep our choices kind of mirrored. However, our bodies are not completely even in openness or balanced in that same way in flexibility. So if you come into a certain choice and it's just not working out for that side, no worries. Just modify, choose another option. They're all good options. Remember, lizard lunge is there for you as well. That deep, deep lunge, bringing the elbows down. A little bit more quad opening is catching the back foot. And settle into your choice for three more breaths. Try to hear the sound of your breath as you inhale through the nose and out the nose. Good. Bring hands to either side of the front foot. Make sure that front foot is nice and centered. Push your hips back half of the way. So right hip over right knee. Wiggle your left heel forward. Extend long through the spine. Shoulders right over wrists for the moment. Our half splits are Ardha Hanumanasana. A little bend in the back of the front knee. Good. Choosing to either stay here. To take it to a twist, hands would come to the outside of the left leg and the right shin spins off the side of the mat. Good. Maybe choosing to take it to that strength work. Hands reach back behind you. <laughs> You're firming the inner thighs and the outer hips as you do this. So this is more of a hip and hamstring strengthening pose. Continue in your choice. Three breaths. Ooh. Relax your mouth. Good. If hands were back, bring them to either side of the front foot. Unwind your twist if you're twisting. Bend into the front knee. Plant the palms. Back toes tuck. Three-legged down dog, lifting the back knee and then the left leg up and back. Just for a moment, bending the knee right away, opening the hip, letting the foot drop behind you. Uh, take it to our pigeon prep. Left knee behind left wrist. Left toes behind right wrist. Back knee lowers. Let yourself drop right over to that left butt cheek and pull your right knee in. It can be pretty close to the left heel. Wiggle your left foot forward a bit more and pull the toes back so you're flexing, finding activation around the ankle in order to protect the knee. Good, so we've got that 90 degree angle with the front leg. It might be the same on the back leg, 90 degrees, but internal rotation, if that's causing you to cramp, right knee comes in closer. Chest facing straight forward, leaning over the front shin bone. See how it feels, maybe holding on fingertips. Maybe coming down to elbows. We've got five breaths. So spending the time to stay focused, to stay present within these poses. If you're like me and you really enjoy kind of the flow of it all, this is where we can really benefit by challenging ourselves to just sit with ourselves and be okay not doing as much. Be okay in stillness. Always bringing it back to the breath, anchoring in our breath. Next breath here, really slow and sweet. Mm. 
Mm, so good. Walk your hands back in. Stay leaning over to the left so you can swing the right leg forward. Hands behind the back. Feet about hips distance or wider towards the edges of the mat. One more time, windshield wipers. Started with windshield wipers. May as well finish with them. Ah, mm, massaging out the glutes. Nice. And stretch the legs as long as the edges of the mat are as wide as the edges of the mat. And come on down to your back. So if you need to scoot forward a little, you can. And with or without your hands, lower yourself down. <sighs> Let the weight come to the pinky toe edges of the feet. And open the arms to either side of your body. Palms facing up. Tuck the shoulder blades beneath you. And once you feel comfortable, settled, close the eyes. And let the breath lead the way into rest, into this very simple state of just being. Staying here as long as you need to. I recommend at least three minutes. In this really precious space where there's nothing required of you, no effort to put forth. All that you need to do is breathe and relax. Thank you so much for joining me on the mat. I'll see you soon.